Good afternoon. We welcome all parishioners to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish as your place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. We welcome all visitors. We depend on your weekly offerings and donations to keep this parish operating. So there are collection boxes, tap machines, parish envelopes, or donations online available for you. Thank you for your continuing support. Please take a moment to silence your phones. Our presider today is Father Ray Earl. Our processional hymn is number 511 in the Catholic Book of Worship, 511. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. Very joyous welcome as we gather this evening on this beautiful day to celebrate our Eucharist. Special welcome to visitors, as was mentioned at the beginning. Uh, I know there are many visitors here today, so a warm welcome to all of you as we gather to celebrate our Eucharist. Let us prepare our hearts now as we open them to the mercy and the love of God present in the Eucharist. We ask forgiveness for our sins. Yeah. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm can be found in the leaflet in your pew, page 98 number 98. The refrain, may the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless us all the 
days of our lives. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. children will be like olive shoots around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Thus shall the one be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you See the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We do indeed see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing men, many sons and daughters to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 
so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciple asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. I have always loved the Desiderata poem. Perhaps you've seen it yourselves or you know of that particular poem. It starts out, and maybe you'll recognize it once I say the opening line, go placidly amid the noise and haste of life and remember what peace there may be in silence. One of the lines in that poem says, Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. I like that thought. We need to strive for high ideals in life. It doesn't mean that we can always reach them, but ideals are something to reach for. One day I was walking down Bloor Street in Toronto some time ago, it was a hot summer day, and Bloor Street is checkered with storefronts, small grocery stores, and the like. Many of them have awnings that stretch out over the sidewalk. There was a little girl with her mother walking ahead of me. And every time that little girl came to an awning, she would jump up in the air and try to touch that overhang every time she came to an awning. And of course, she was too small, and so every time she jumped, she missed it by that much. <laughs> but she never gave up. Her enthusiasm was contagious. In today's reading, we are presented with high ideals. Marriage is one such ideal for which many strive. In the creation story in the first reading from the book of Genesis, the Lord God fashioned human beings after his own likeness. We are creatures meant to be in relationship with one another. Wouldn't take someone long to die if they were stranded alone with no contact with other human beings. We certainly know the effects that COVID had upon us, for example, and the isolation and the loneliness. We are meant to be social beings, partners, as the first reading says, on the journey of life. Jesus makes reference to the creation story in response to a question about divorce in the gospel. He says, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This was in the mind of God from the very beginning. And the ideal of marriage has not changed down through the centuries. Many of you here today continue to celebrate the beautiful gift of marriage. For some, that fidelity and commitment has extended to years as you have journeyed together fulfilling your marriage vows in the good times and in the bad, in sickness and in health until death do you part. Just a few weeks ago, as a parish family, we celebrated the 60th wedding anniversary of a couple, a young couple. <laughs> 60 years of dedicated and faithful love. It's something beautiful, really, to honor and to celebrate. I'm sure that many of us also know the reality of broken relationships in our own families. Even in Moses' day, the ideal of marriage, it seems, was difficult to reach. True also in our own day. For some, what started out as an ideal ended in a difficult reality. The love and the support of the church is essential to those who find themselves in such a situation. 
As St. Paul says in the second reading, even Jesus was made perfect through suffering. Sometimes suffering is part and part of our lives and broken relationships are the reality that we have to live with and to deal with in life. Our difficulties and sufferings count. Commitment in our day, I think, is sometimes a word that strikes fear into the hearts of people. Nevertheless, and that can be commitment to anything, commitment in relationships is an ideal that reaches out across the sidewalks of our lives, something for which we strive. Like the little girl reaching for the awning, ideals are something we strive for. Sometimes we fall short, but the adventure is in the striving. Today, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we remember that Jesus gave the ultimate commitment of his life on the cross for our salvation. He was committed to the Father's will. Surely he will give us strength to strive for high ideals in our relationships with one another, in those who are married, in the sacrament of marriage. To those of you who are united in marriage, God's blessing upon you in your commitment. To those who find themselves in broken relationships, may God give you courage and strength. To all of us who are social beings, may we strive for high ideals every day in our relationships with one another. Let's keep reaching for the awnings that bring us great strength and great courage and hope in our lives. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we lift up our voices now in confident prayer before God, praying for the needs of the Church and the world and our own special intentions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, and for all who lead and guide our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminarians, Chris Quigley, Evan Chafe, and Shane Tucker, that the Holy Spirit will guide them in their time of study and discernment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in this season of creation that we may respect and care for the earth, our common home we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may realize that Christ's presence in the Eucharist is a daily call for us to help migrants and refugees, the hungry, the poor, and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict in our world, especially in the Holy Land and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the sick and suffering in body, mind, and spirit, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved ones who have died, for Edna Myrick, Frank Bintz, Estella Davis, Alan Call, and Lee Ann Avery, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pause for a moment as we recommend to the Lord any of our own special needs. Dear loving, gracious God, hear the prayers of your people as we gather before you this day. We trust in your love for us always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our, for our good, good and the good of all his, his holy church. church. <clears throat> accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To be stewards in your name over all you have made, and to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. 
souls in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. We remember the intentions of today's Mass. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. But by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May that peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, the word and, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn is number 604 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Seed, Scattered and Sown, 604. Seed, scattered and sown, wheat gathered and grown, bread broken and shared as one. The living bread of God, vine fruit of the land, wine work of our hands, one cup that is shared by all, the living cup, the living. God. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that what that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I wish you a blessed evening, everyone, with your families and your friends. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 625 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 625. Receive some.